Hey, thanks for tuning into this Firecast. My name is Doug Stevenson, and I'll show you how you can get started monitoring crashes in your Android app with Firebase Crash Reporting. Imagine you've spent a lot of time developing and testing your Android app, and you've just published it to the Play Store for everyone to use. Now, obviously, you want your users to have the best possible experience with your app. So if there's a bug that causes problems in it, you need to know that as soon as possible so you can fix it. To help with this, you can integrate the Firebase Crash Reporting SDK with a single line of configuration before you publish. If you haven't integrated any other Firebase features in your app yet, watch this other video first to get started. Then you can follow along here to use Firebase Crash Reporting. I already have an app that's using Firebase, so I'll integrate Crash Reporting into that. I'm going to open my app's build.gradle and find the project dependencies block. Then I'll add the dependency for Firebase Crash Reporting. The latest version at the time of this recording is 10.0.1. You should find and use the latest version. Then I'll sync my project. And that's it. Adding the dependency is all you have to do if you want to record when your app crashes. There are no additional lines of code to write. It just works. Whenever an exception is thrown that crashes your app, you receive that exception with its full stack trace in the Firebase console. To improve on that, there are some additional things you can do with a few lines of code using the Firebase Crash Reporting API. For example, you can log messages that will appear in a crash report so you can get some more context into what was happening just before the crash. And you can report exceptions that you catch if you don't know how to handle them. These will show up as non-fatal reports in the console. Typically, you don't need to report caught exceptions, but it can be useful for diagnosing rare or unexpected problems. I'll add some of these calls right now. First, I'll add a line of code to log a message that I know will happen just before I report an exception. Then, I'll report a fake exception that I'll create on my own. It works the same as if I had caught the exception inside a try catch. Now, I'll build and launch the app and examine the log file. If I want to see the report for this, I'll load up Firebase console for my app and select crash reporting on the left. You can see that the console for my app now shows my exception as a non-fatal error that didn't crash the app. If I click into it, I can see details about the device. In this case, we see it's from my emulator. The full stack trace is also there, in addition to the message I logged. After I fix the problem, I can close this issue with the close button so it won't show again. When a new crash is discovered by Firebase Crash Reporting, I'll also receive an email notification. This email gives me some basic details about the crash and a button to click to view it in the console. It should take less than a minute for a report to show up in the console after it's sent. When you're trying this yourself, be sure to have a good network connection and also try launching the application again to make sure any unsent reports have a chance to make it to the console. A new app like mine doesn't have very many interesting crashes to view, but you can use the Firebase demo app to view much more interesting data. You can get read-only access to that project by using the link in the description below. The demo app is called Flood It by Lab Pixies, which is a game that you can download from the Play Store. Let's see what crash reports look like for that app right now. This project has both an Android app and an iOS app associated with it, and I'm going to choose to view the crashes for the Android version. Here, we can see the recent history of crashes with details in the table below, sorted by the number of times each has occurred. If I click one, it will show me the stack trace, and if I click View Details, it will show me some statistics about this particular error. Notice that you can view each and every occurrence of this crash by clicking the arrows. This entire collection of crashes is called an issue, and an issue is formed based on crashes that are similar to each other. They all represent the same error, but the stack trace and device details may be slightly different from each other. For an individual crash, you can see detailed information about the device at the time of the crash. In this particular error, the most helpful part of the stack trace happens to be hidden, so I'm going to expand that. Here you can see that the problem starts in the extra steps activity in its on resume method. If I scroll down further, I can see a log of what happened just before the crash. Here there are a bunch of log items that were automatically created from Firebase Analytics events at the time they occurred. These events are logged automatically. You don't have to write any code to make this happen. And that's a basic tour of Firebase crash reporting. But there's a few more things you need to know before you publish your app to the Play Store. First, be sure to separate your development environment from your production environment. The usual way to do that is to create a whole new Firebase project for each type of build. That way, any crashes that occur while developing your app will remain separate from those that happen to your users in production. You can read this blog post to get more information about that. Second, 
if you're using ProGuard to obfuscate and shrink your code, you'll need to upload the mappings file generated for the build that you publish to the store. You can either upload it through the console or use a Gradle plugin to run a task that performs the upload. Be sure to read the documentation about that because you won't be able to read your stack traces without uploading the correct mapping file. If you have any questions about Firebase crash reporting, reach out to us on Twitter with the hashtag AskFirebase or any of the Firebase support channels. My name is Doug Stevenson. Thanks for watching and be sure to squash all those bugs. Thanks for watching our video. Check out some more here and don't forget to subscribe to the Firebase YouTube channel.